how will he hear what I pray? Cause I know I, I can die any day. Teach you how will just show me the way? The way. Turn the water down the path that you lay. Can a brother pull up the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20? The book of Isaiah. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. The law, to the law and the to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. What does that mean? Read it again, brother. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So what are you using to speak? Read it one more time, brother. To the law and to the te testimony. To the what, brother? To the testimony. It's uh, two things to the law. To the law and to the testimony. If and that part, to the law and to the testimony. Uh, huh? No. The prophets. And if they speak not according to this word, it means what? There's no light in you. So how can we assume that there's light in you if you're not speaking according to the law and the testimony? You're dealing with men who have the word of the Bible in their hand, and you don't. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on with that one. chapter 4 and verse 11. Let me get Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. First Peter, chapter 4 verse 11. It reads, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man speak, do it how, brother? Let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability of what God given. That God in all things may be glorified through the Hawashat of Mashiach, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Come, let me get what you got in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, start at verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Say that one more time, bro. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. Be more ready to what, brother? Be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. Be not what, brother? And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Read that one more time, brother, from the top. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty unto to utter anything before God. Come. Huh. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Huh. Book of Matthew, for the 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye be, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Say that again, bro. The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Say that one more time, bro. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Con, that, that word said that every idle word that man shall speak, that he will give account of on the day of judgment. Well, we should speak to the law and to the testimony. You don't have the law and the testimony on you. 
we have the law and the testimony here. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. That said, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Okay, but you're dealing with men who have the word itself. And we have a Bible in your face. Okay, so this is the law to the testimony. Get the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. This man said, We don't need the Bible, we don't need the book. The words are going to be inscribed in our hearts, so I suppose we can speak for my God. Isaiah 34 and 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye from where, brother? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No, seek out of my own heart. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No, seek it from the man, from the heart of the man in the street. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded. And his spirit it gath hath gathered them. And he has cast the lot to them. And his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it from heaven. Uh, so again, this is being told to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. What is the book of the Lord? The book of the Lord is written on your heart. Why can't you say what the scriptures say? It does say it's one thing to look read at. Read Isaiah 34 and 16 again. Look it up where it says it's written on your heart. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Tablets of their heart. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Um, again, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Let me get Revelations 1 and 3. Book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 3. Bless is he that readeth. Um, say that again, bro. Bless is he that readeth. No, nah, bless is he that thinks out of his own heart. Bless is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Tend therein, care of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Huh. Let me get Jeremiah chapter 17. See, this is a major deception that's going on in the world today. Because this man is not alone in this ideology. That we can come out of our own hearts and out of our own spirits and speak thus said the most high God. But this is not so. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse 4. And thou, even thyself. Chapter 17, verse 9. 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Say that again, brother. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Huh. What did you have, bro? From the Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. No, lean on my own heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. Lean on to my own mind. Lean not to thy own understanding. I don't need the book. Lean not to thy own understanding. And all thy way acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be healed, health to thy neighbor, and narrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy bars be filled with plenty. Thy presence shall burst with new wine. Time. So again, it says, be not wise in thine own eyes. And we read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, that you've been instructed to seek out of the book of the Lord and read that none of those prophecies shall fail because the Most High Himself hath commanded those words. 
So it's important that we go into the scriptures to find out whatever it is that's most, that's thus said the most high God. Somebody let me get the book of Hosea chapter 12 and 10. The book of Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Come. The, mouth, the Most High God is telling you here that he's spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets. Okay. Look at Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. They're going to feed you with what, brother? Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more. The ark of the, of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Huh. So again, we come out here, the watchmen for Israel, to help give the information of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, they need to be able to hearken and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Okay. You don't have the mark. So this is going out to all of those children of Israel. It's okay, brother. It's okay, brother. We understand what spirit this uh we understand what spirit this demon is in. No sir, no sir. It's okay, brother. Brother. Jacob their sins. So as I mentioned, we're here to tell the 12 tribes of Israel to hearken unto the voice of the Most High God and to come back to his law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, because this is the day to do it. When Yahweh who the world equally calls Jesus Christ, was on this earth, he constantly told you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And again, the message is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All you got is demons. You ain't got no 144,000. Somebody let me get the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Look at Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. And be what, brother? And be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of repression shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Yahweh Hamashiach, which before was preached to you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution 
of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Come. So again, we come to tell our people that they need to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you just listen to that scripture in the book of Acts, it told you to repent and be converted. Okay, to be converted means to change. So Yahweh was telling you to come on to, the, on, to come on to this looking to repent and turn away. Turn back from the thoughts, from the evil, wicked thoughts that are in your mind. But how can one do that? How can one get your help with converting? Because this is obviously not an easy thing. If it was an easy thing, everyone would be able to do it. But it's going to be difficult to convert. What is it that we can use that may help us to convert? Can a brother get me the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7? The book of Psalms, chapter 19, and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law of the Lord is what, brother? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightened the eyes. Come. So again, we just made that plain. That in order to repent, you need to be converted. And Psalms 19.7 just told us that the laws of the Most High God are perfect at converting the soul. So that's an obvious connection that if a person is looking to repent and come back to the Most High God, you should be looking to keep the Most High God commandments. Because then you will be converted. Then you will change. Then you will be able to repent and come back to those laws. Okay, we're going to be able to go to that. Somebody let me get the book of Proverbs 18 and 21. Book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. No, the words that you speak are a light thing. They don't mean anything. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whoso findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. Time. So I can, we can stop right there. Let me get the book of Matthew 15, starting at verse 10. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth to find the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth is to find the man. Say that one more time, brother. What, what the defileth the man? Not that which goeth into thy mouth that defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth this the final domain. Go ahead, uh, pick back up at verse 17. 17. Do not be yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile the man. But to eat with unwashed hands defile not a man. Huh. So again, we've made a plain upon tables that the words that come out of your mouth is what defiles you. Okay, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Okay, so the words that we speak, we are going to be held accountable for those words. Every idle word that a man shall speak, he's going to be judged thereby. Okay. These are very, these are very important that the children of Israel are able to hearken unto these words. Okay. These words are for everybody. If you understand that Yahweh spent his ministry speaking in parables, and when the disciples asked him why he spoke in parables, he explained it to you because it was not it was not given for everyone to receive it. He spoke in parables. So as you see people walk by, go to and fro, you'll see some hearkening unto the word, and you'll see some that don't. All right, let me get that out of the book of John. Chapter 10. Oh, you get a free glass of water. These demons around here want to give you a free glass of water. I started at 26, John 10 and 26. Book of John, chapter 10 and verse 26. 
But ye believe not, because ye are not my sheep. Why don't they believe, brother? Because ye are not of my sheep. As I say unto you, my sheep, hear my voice. My sheep do what, brother? My sheep, hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Huh. Now, you're going to think those are my words, but those are the words of Yahweh and Yahweh told you that his sheep are going to hear his voice. So I'd be fearful if I was not able to hearken to those words. Read that one more time, brother. Verse 26. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I have said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Tom, again, that's being made plain upon table. Okay, this word is going out to the sheep of Yahweh, and Yahweh sheep are going to hearken to his voice, and they're going to follow him, and they're going to follow the Lamb wherever so he goes. Okay, so the children of Israel, you are the ones who need to be able to hearken to this word. But why are you not listening? Okay, we'll have the heathen come in our face and scream with the Satan, with the spirit of Satan on them all day. But yet the children of Israel won't be able to hearken. And there's a reason for that. Somebody let me get the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Why is it that the children of Israel are the ones who won't be able to hearken into the voice of Yahweh? Let's see. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel, the, but who, brother? But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Tom, the Most High said Israel, his people, they don't know who they are, and not only that, they don't even consider. Okay, so the children of Israel are going to be walking to and fro, and they're not going to be able to hearken to the voice of the of the Most High God or of Yahweh because they don't know who they are. And they don't consider. We are a stiff-necked people. Somebody let me get that in the book of Baruch, chapter 2 and verse 30. You never heard God talk to you. You never heard God talk to you. All you do is read word and think you're going to heaven. You're sacked. You're a Pharisee and a sad. You're sad. You got Baruch, you got it, Tom Baruch 2 and 30. Okay, so again, this message is going out to the children of Israel, all right? And, we, and, and the Most High is asking you to hearken and turn your ears and listen. But this is the current state of the people who are going to get it. The book of Baruch, chapter 2 and verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. No, brother, they're going to listen. Because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am the Lord their God, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiffness and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord, and I will bring them again into the land which I promised with the note unto their fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God. And they shall be my people. And I, and I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. Huh. Again, okay, the Most High is telling you that the children of Israel have their stiff neck ways, and that they won't hearken to the voice of the Most High God. But in the land of their captivities, they're going to wake up. They're going to wake up to who they are. They're going to wake up to the to the deeds and to the actions of their forefathers. They're going to wake up with repentance on their mind. They're going to wake up looking to seek, search, and find the Most High God and His law, statutes, and commandments. What you have, brother? Look at Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, what we got to do, brother? Shall humble themselves. 
and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Hold up. Did that say then will I hear from heaven, brother? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Huh. So this is again telling you plain upon tables. Okay, that if his people were to humble themselves, okay, and to seek his face and to pray to him, that then he will heal their land. But that then is a reaction word, okay? So that means that the Most High God is waiting on us to make the first action, which is to turn from our stiff neck ways. Okay, let me read you guys in John. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Now we know that God hears not sinners. Hold on, brother. The Most High is not hearing who? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Now how many people thought that the Most High God was hearing their prayers? Read that again, brother. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. No, God hears everyone. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Huh. Yes, he does Again, hear. this is being made plain. Okay, the Most High is not hearing you just because you're worthy. There's something that you have to do. Okay, you children of Israel have to turn from your stiff neck ways. You children of Israel have to humble yourselves. You have to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Somebody let me get the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Somebody let me get that in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 18. We're going to tell you about the knowledge that you think is knowledge, but you're being deceived. There's only one truth, and there's only one wisdom. And that's going to be the truth and wisdom given by the Most High God. What you got, brother? Hallelujah. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Say that one more time, brother. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Huh. So the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Okay, so do not lean on your own understanding. Okay, if you're looking for the truth, you have to go into these scriptures. Somebody let me get the book of John 14, verse 6. And what is the truth? Somebody let me get the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 142. What is the truth? And, and how important is that to us? Okay. Let me see what you got, bro. The book of Psalms. Chapter 119 and verse 142. This thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth, brother? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Huh. He said thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law. Thy law is the truth. Okay, let me do what you got in the book of John, brother. 14 and 6. And let me get you uh, uh, You want to ascend to the heights, Isaiah? You want to ascend to the heights to be Yahweh? I got a place for The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Yahweh shall say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yahweh shall say what, brother? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Let me get John 8, 32 from you. We're going to start chapter 4, verse 28. Strive for the truth until death. No, don't worry about the truth. Strive for the truth until death. Now I'll give up and just result and just live on the lie. Strive for the truth until death. Keep lying, Satan. Keep lying, Satan. Keep lying. Strive for the truth until death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy seed, slack and remnant. Be not as a lion in thy house, 
nor print it among thy servants. Let not thy hand be stretched out to receive and shut when thou shouldest repay. Come. Huh. Hey, what you got, brother? The book of John, chapter 8, and verse 32. And ye shall, not, shall know the truth. Ye shall know what, brother? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. What makes you free, brother? And the truth shall make you free. Huh. So how important is this truth? Okay, we just found out that Yahweh Shah, who the world equally calls Jesus Christ, said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and that no man come into the Father except through him. So the only way to get the truth is to do what we've seen in the book of Isaiah 34 and 16, is to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Okay, like the Revelations 1 and 3 said, blessed is he that read it. Okay? Again, we're going to get to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and 5, and show you how dangerous it is for a person to think that they can come out of their own belly with the understanding of the Most High God. Let me get that one more time, brother. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. Lean not on what, brother? Lean not to thy own understanding. Huh? Somebody let me get the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Again, we're going to nip this in the bud, okay? Because while this man obviously has a spirit on him, you'd be surprised how dominant this spirit is on the earth today. Because though many of us might not be smitten with the same level of madness as that man, Many of us are smitten with that same spirit that tells us that we don't need to seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Many of us have this feeling that the Most High God is going to come and deal with us one-on-one, -on -one, almost as if he's going to come off his throne and come and meet us and tell us what his direction is and plead with us for us to follow his law, statutes, and commandments. But don't be deceived, brother. Don't be deceived, sister. The word has told you to seek out of the book of the Lord and read. And blessed is he that read it. Okay, so we're not going to come over here and lean on our own understanding. And I would tell you that if any brothers or any sisters, any of you of the children of Israel, any of you who were able to hearken to the voice of Yahweh Shah, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That is where you're going to find your truth. That is where you're going to find your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and only there. And you should require the same thing of your pastors and of your teachers. If anybody is allowed to teach or minister to you, then they should come and speak, thus said the Lord. We just read that in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and 20. We just read that in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and 11. So do not be deceived, brothers. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Um, last time I... Matthew 4 and 4. The book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Can I get that one more time, brother? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Huh. This just said, plain upon tables again, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Most High God. Okay, so that means that every word that Yahweh Shai has spoken is how man should live. That's your food. That's your sustenance. That's your nourishment. That's your nutrition. Man should live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Most High God. Just show me the way, the way. Trying to walk down the path that you lay